Brain mower. Showing you guys how I put belts on my truck. Or mower, my bad. Alright, got a rod strap down around. I run such a small belt. Like it really doesn't even really need a clutch pulley. It just puts the extra tension on it. Alright, this is what I do. Okay. See the pulleys? Alright. Tuck this one up and over the belt. Push it down. Such strong tensioner pulleys. Take my ratchet strap. Pull it up right underneath me. Use a ratchet strap for everything, especially fixing flat tires. Well, putting them back on the bead, my bad. Alright, I'm loosen this up a little bit. Just so I can get this tension. Alright. <clears throat> Ratchet to where it will hold. Grab my belt. Get up over this bolt on the back side. That's gonna be the trickiest part. Holding the belt. fun part. Stretching it over onto the pulley. And we're on. And release the strap. And we're on. Yeah. There we go, guys. That's how I put my belt on my Thing. See how nice the tension it is? Push clutch in, releases it. Reads tight clutch. There we go. No need for double pulley clutch like I have on the Troy. Ugh. I can show you guys that. I just said that. Fearless Front didn't design that. It's been designed a long ass time ago. Remember the people who designed this mower did it. The pulley work is all the same. And I have it on tires and a jack and all this crap. Don't know if you guys can see it, but we'll try to show you. And you can't really see it. Of course. Well, basically, there's a pulley right... Where's it at? Okay, there's one right here with two springs, and there's one right there. Oh wait, no, it's right here. The little pulley clutch is right there to right there. Basically, that works. That's how they're designed. He didn't make those up. Once I figured that out, I was like, wow, you fucking loser. Not really a loser, but he's got some pretty cool videos, pretty cool tractors, but... <sighs> he lies. He lied about that. Alrighty, guys. I was going to tell you one more thing, too. After doing the push button ignition, so it don't drain your battery, disconnect this. I think I'll connect it back up for you guys and show you. Hold up. Alright. That one's connected. Now you go to your cylinder, the wire on the bottom of your solenoid to activate it. If I can find it. Where'd I put that thingy? This one, right here. Plug that back in the bottom of your solenoid. Also too, it makes it so no one can just start your mower up. That's another good thing. But, uh... This is the trickiest part. Plugging the little freaking female piece back on this little connector. Show you guys how I waterproof my cylinder too right after this. It's really simple, anyone could do it. You could have a shit ton of RBTB. No one's down here, that's why. Duh. Okay. How I waterproof my, my solenoid. 
silicone the shit out of it. Both sides, all around, everything. Ground, don't really have to worry about that. But, that way when you get started, flip your kill switch on. Alright guys, how's that? Just letting you guys know about that one. Because uh, a lot of people don't know that. Disconnect. And disconnect. And there you go. More power. But my lights are still hooked up. But there you go. There's that. Yeah, the snorkel didn't work because... Oh, these carburetors. There's a little jet right here. And it's right here on the very end. I could probably do that thing if I drilled out a hole and placed it exactly where I needed to. But that didn't work because... Well, basically, that jet was clogged. It wouldn't start up. But there's that. Turn my fuel off. See, this is what I use for a fuel shut off. Since these ones will flood if, like, we're loading up on a truck. And you don't have the thing on. Zip tie sock filter works excellent. There's that, guys. Newest edition, jumper cables. Gotta have those. Heavy to ram bar. I'm gonna try this next romp. Lower air pressure in the tires. So maybe I'll be able to get a little bit of grip. I'm gonna turn. I might put a little bit more in there. But uh, they got tubes in the front. Uh, these are foam filled. They work excellent. There's that, guys. Alrighty. I'm going to push her back in the garage. And uh, if you guys need tires, let me know. Because uh, I got 18s right there. I got... Um, don't know what size these are. Another set of 18s. But these are the wide ones. I got another set of 8 or uh, 16s, I think. And everything 18s. Alright guys, there's that. Just let me know if you need tires. Probably work something out. Also too, if uh, you want to build a rock crawler. You got a couple extra spares like that. Uh, this is my lawnmower lift I made up. It's a... Basically just two pieces of metal. That fold like a scissor. I can't do it with holding the phone. But uh, big strong bolt, big strong bolt. It's got this thing up where I can adjust it to where which side I want like so and pull this pin down pull it down and lock it in actually it'd be flipped over the other side uh -huh. sorry about that guys wait no alright right well no I know I'm right this part you hook a chain wrench to it, pull your mower up onto it, and uh, it'll just lock it in which thing you want. You can raise it up, raise it up. Basically, you can actually work underneath it if you need to. Pretty smart idea. How much work I do on the mowers. But, uh, where's that? I'm actually thinking about running disc brakes in the front of this. So I can sit there and burn out. Might work. We'll see how it works. Neighbor's pretty cute. Anyways, uh, there's that for you guys. This is a, a homemade trans bracket. It was out of a the Craftsman Lauren thing. I know these are crappy ass welds. I ran out of wire. I was just trying to get it tacked on there. This leftover piece of pipe I had from when I did the center replacement right here helps keep the frame from flexing at all. Really solid now. Um, that's actually, honestly, oh yeah, you guys know about the the front steering upgrade that worked. It's wash. It's a three sixteenths washers or three eighths. I think three sixteenths. Might be three eighths. Anyways, this an extra cotter pin if I need it. Right there. Spot for my water bottle right here. 
uh, that's basically it. And uh, the reason why I'll show you guys where it broke. Yeah, I broke up. I broke the front transmission mount. Right there. I tried to plug it up, but really there was nothing that nothing could leak into it. Nothing could get into it. But uh, right here, the frame bent, and that's what broke it out. But uh, I fixed her up. Got at least one good solid bracket on her. She ain't going nowhere now. Um, you can see my crappy ass weld right there. I just tried to get as much freaking heat as I could on that without burning through it. But uh, there's that. I'm going to push right back in the garage and uh, getting ready to go to World's Fun. Alrighty, guys. We're going to be going to a haunted house. Well, the haunted houses. Hey, you like my 70s glasses? So, <laughs> anyways, uh, another gas tank I'm gonna be mounting on her first spare. I got springs up the ass. Probably too much tension, but better more tension than no tension. I'd rather have a bolt uh, snap on me. So there we go. I am shutting the garage. Going upstairs, get ready, and uh, that's about it. So, like I said, once you disconnect those two things, no one can start your mower up and ride off with it. And I'll see you hold your battery will hold the charge. All right, guys, I'm going. I'm getting ready. We're going to go to the haunted houses. All right, later.